All right, awesome table is completed. Next thing, let's see. Um, so for the neighbor hydrogens, in case you guys got stuck on that, what we basically do is reverse the n plus 1 rule that we use to get our septet or doublet. So make sure you, you, uh, you've already watched um, video 4 of 6, I believe, where I cover that. But basically, if you have a splitting pattern of a 7 or like septet, in, in order to get that, you did n plus 1 to get the 7. So you must have only 6 hydrogen neighbors. For a doublet, you only have one hydrogen neighbor in order to cause this splitting pattern. If you're a singlet, right, that means you have no neighbors making you angry and rageful, causing splitting. So that's why there's no neighbors for that one. Okay? And now we basically piece everything together, together, together. Okay, now that we have our puzzle pieces all organized, why don't we just label them? So I'm going to do HA, HB, and HC. Okay? And then all I also did is I made a list of the atoms that we need in our structure. So as we um, draw them out, we can start crossing out what we um, don't need anymore. Okay? So now when you have your uh, table all set up, this is when you need to refer to your shifts table, which tells you like um, what functional group would be at like what shift. For example, uh, a methyl group, right? Methyl groups, methyl group hydrogens, they're usually at um, 0 0.8 to like 1.6 if it's really deshielded. But if you guys don't have the shift table, I have the link down below, and I'm probably gonna make an annotation right here in front of my face, so you guys can click on that. So. Um, why don't we start with the extremes? That usually helps us the most when we want to um, figure out the structure. If you take a look at take a look at eleven point two, right? In your shift table, you should probably only have carboxylic acids, or, or the hydrogen of the of the carboxylic acids in that range, and that's perfect because if there's no other hydrogens that are in that range, then we must have a carboxylic acid in our structure. So let's draw that out. So a carboxylic acid is pretty much just this, a carbonyl, so carbon-oxygen double bond with hydrogen. I mean, sorry, not with the hydrogen, with the OH group over here. So that's a carboxylic acid. Um, we basically already found out where our HA is. So you could basically check that off. And then we took care of one carbon. So now we still need three more carbons. We took away one, I mean, we drew one of the hydrogens, so we still need seven, and both of the oxygens are taken care of, all right? And then if we check, out with that, check with our degrees of unsaturation, we already took care of the double bond, so everything's all satisfied over here, okay? And so it looks like we are still, we're still missing three carbons, seven hydrogens, right? So for sure, this, here must be a carbon to extend the chain. If this was a hydrogen, then our molecule would be done, and we can't extend any further. So that's that's no good. So we have a carbon over here, and then we still need to extend more carbons, right? So let's see. Uh, let me cross this out. So we have two carbons. We're still missing seven hydrogens. Um, so we basically have two options over here. We can either extend this carbon and have another carbon over here, right? And we'll have one, two, three, four carbons and we fill everything. Or we can have this structure over here, where you basically have these two carbons over here branch out at this carbon, all right? Because that's our other possibility. And then after that, you see both of these fulfill the, the, the two missing carbons that we are, that we're lacking. So let's get rid of that. And let's draw in the hydrogens. So we have hydrogens over here, here. All right, so I'm missing one more hydrogen. Do you guys know which one's missing? It's the chicken foot hydrogen right here, right? This hydrogen here makes, it a, makes this carbon a tetrahedral, and, or a chicken foot, as some people like to call it. And let's just make sure we fulfill all the hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight total hydrogens or I guess the seven that are missing are over here. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seven's missing is fulfilled, so we're done, basically. Um, we have two structures. We're not sure which one is the correct one. But what we do now is kind of um, compare it with our awesome table to see which one actually matches up. And um, in case, I don't want to give you guys the wrong impression, NMRs isn't really, really simple and direct. 
a lot of times you do have to fiddle around with the different possibilities, but it's okay because you do have your awesome table there to tell you which one is the correct one. And then you guys will see right now uh, what I mean. But we are looking for one hydrogen that's being split by six neighbors that are non-equivalent to this original guy, right? Well, we don't really have that in this molecule over here, right? Because we have these two hydrogens are equivalent, these two hydrogens are equivalent, and these three hydrogens are equivalent to each other. But we don't have two hydrogens that fulfill that uh, description in our table here, or in our NMR. And then we don't have these two hydrogens here either, or a, th a three hydrogen group here. So this molecule doesn't really correspond well with it. But if you take a look at this molecule, right? Uh, we do have a hydrogen here that's being split by six neighbors that are within three bonds distance, right? One bond, two bond, three bond, and one bond, two bond, three bond, yada, 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 three bonds, one bond, two bond, three bonds. So this guy, this molecule here actually make, does fit it a lot better. So chances are this actually is the molecule. And let's see, um, we also are looking for, let's see, so yeah, we think this is HB. We're looking for six hydrogens that are only being split by one neighbor that's different from the six. So they actually, these six hydrogens here, right, they're actually equivalent because the bonds are rotating, like I explained in my, in my equivalent hydrogens video. And also the, uh, this bond over here is, is free to rotate. So they're spinning, spinning, spinning. These six hydrogens are in the same environment. This hydrogen is not because it's closer to the electronegative carboxylic acid group there that's deshielding. Um, giving it a shift that's more downfield than the six hydrogens that are farther away and protected by these carbons, okay? So yeah, from the looks of things, this, these guys over here are HC, 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 and we're done over there. We fulfilled the degrees of unsaturation with the double bond in, in our carbonyl right here, so that's perfect. And yeah, from the looks of things, um, this is actually going to be our final product right here. Let's see, and we can also just double check it one more time with this uh, chemical formula. Four carbons, one, two, three, four. Eight hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two oxygens right here, right here. One degree of unsaturation in the double bond of the carbonyl. Uh, integration work, our awesome table is awesome. And that's basically it for um, my uh, NMR series. If any of you are up for the challenge, I do have more practice problems and more complicated problems which I think you guys should actually really practice because I did choose a more simple example. But yeah, uh, that's basically it. I hope this video series was helpful for you guys and it made NMARS a little bit more easy. Um, let's see, uh, if you guys like this video series, make sure you like it down below and tell your friends too. And um, I guess if you have some time, leave me a comment down below to tell me if I'm on the right track. If you guys don't see what you guys need, um, send, me, send the request on either through Facebook or through a comment and I'll try and get to it. If I don't get a chance to get to it, we can always set up a Skype tutoring session or something like that. All right? All right, thank you very much. Bye.